You're watching Kay's Most Interesting. The Amityville Horror The Amityville House was built in the year 1924, but in 1965 it was purchased by the DeFeo family. The DeFeo family consisted of the father, Ronald DeFeo Sr., the mother, Louise DeFeo, and the five children, Ronald Jr., Don, John, Allison, and Mark DeFeo. Ronald and Louise were a nice-looking couple. Ronald was a tall, slender, handsome man, and Louise was actually into modeling. Louise's father was wealthy and helped the DeFeos out a lot, including helping them move from an apartment and into the Amityville house. He even allegedly spent $50,000 on family portraits for the family's house. The DeFeo family fought a lot, and the father had a temper that he took out on his wife and Ronald Jr., which was the oldest of the children. Ron Sr. worked at a car dealership that was owned by his father-in-law, and when Ron Jr. was growing up as a young child, he was very chubby and overweight, which caused him to get bullied and picked on a lot. Because of this, he started taking methamphetamines and lost a lot of weight and was skinnier as a teenager. All Ron Jr. ever really did was fight, drink, and gamble, though. On November 13, 1974, six members of the DeFeo family were murdered, the mother, the father, and four of the children were shot to death. It is said that around 6.30 p.m. Wednesday, November 13, 1974, the 23-year-old DeFeo Jr. came to Henry's Bar in Amityville, Long Island, New York, and said, You've got to help me. I think my mother and father are shot. A small group and DeFeo all went to the house and found the murdered parents. DeFeo's friend called the police and that's when the rest of the family were discovered dead. All victims were said to have been shot at 3 a.m. that day with a 35 caliber lever action Marlin 336C rifle. The parents were both shot twice each and the children only once. Physical evidence actually suggested that Louise and Allison were actually awake at the times of the murders. According to the police officers, all victims were found face down on their beds. The victims were buried in nearby St. Charles Cemetery in Farmingdale. Ron Jr. was the only survivor. He was taken to the local PD for his own protection after suggesting to the PD at the scene of the crime that the killing had been carried out by a mob hitman, Louis Fellini. However, an interview at this station soon exposed serious inconsistencies in his version of events. The next day, DeFeo confessed to the killings himself, and Fellini, the alleged hitman, had an alibi proving that he was out of state at the time. DeFeo actually told detectives, Once I started, I just couldn't stop. It went so fast. He admitted to taking a bath and redressing after the murders. He even mentioned discarding the crucial evidence such as clothes, rifle, and cartilages before going to work as usual. His defense lawyer was William Weber. Weber mounted an affirmation defense of insanity, saying that DeFeo killed his family in defense because he heard their voices plotting against him. The insanity plea was actually supported by a psychiatrist, Daniel Swartz. The other psychiatrist for the prosecution side said that he was of sound of mind regardless of the use of heroin and LSD at the time of the murders. DeFeo was found guilty on six counts of second-degree murder. Judge Thomas Stark sentenced DeFeo to six sentences of 25 to life. As of today, DeFeo is held at the Sullivan Correctional Facility in the town of Fallsburg, New York, and all of his appeals requested to the parole board have been denied. But there's a lot of confusion. Nobody knows the true story because DeFeo has changed it so many times. And oddly, all six of the victims were found face down on their beds, and there was no sign of struggle, and although the rifle was not fired with a sound suppressor, none of the neighbors heard any of the gunshots. There was only one neighbor that said between 3 and 3.15 a.m. 
he heard a dog barking. DeFeo had admitted to drugging his family before shooting them, but there was no drugs found in their system. The motive for killing was very unclear. DeFeo did ask about collecting life insurance on his parents, so that could have been a partial reason. DeFeo claimed, in another story, that Don killed the father and the mother killed all the siblings with a 38 caliber Smith & Wesson revolver, and then he killed his mother. He stated that he took the blame because he was afraid to say anything negative about his mother to her father, Michael, and his father's uncle out of fear that they would kill him. In 1990, Ron Jr. filed a 440 motive proceeding to have his conviction vacated. He said that Don and an unknown assailant who had left the house before he could get a description of him killed their parents. And DeFeo said the only person that he had killed was Don, and that it was by accident as they struggled over a rifle. DeFeo had actually said that he was married to a Geraldine and said he was also with her brother at the time. Evidence suggested that Richard Raimondo, the brother of Geraldine, did not exist and that Geraldine was married to someone else at the time of the murders. In 1992, Geraldine secured a statement under oath admitting Raimondo was not real and that she didn't marry DeFeo until 1989 in anticipation of the filing of the 440 motion. November 30, 2000, Ronald Jr. met with Osana, the author of The Night of the DeFeos Died. The Night the DeFeos Died. According to Osana, they talked for around six hours. However, DeFeo denied talking to Asana at all, claiming he immediately left the interview. But Asana said that DeFeo claimed that he had committed the murders with his sister Dawn and two of their friends out of desperation because his parents had plotted to kill him. Ron claimed that after a fight with his father, him and his sister planned to kill the parents, but Dawn had murdered the kids in order to eliminate them as witnesses. He said he was mad after what she did, so he knocked her unconscious on the bed and shot her. Police actually found traces of unburned gunpowder on Dawn's nightgown, which allegedly proves she did discharge a firearm. However, the ballistics expert testified that unburned gunpowder is discharged through the muzzle of the weapon, indicating that she was not near or that she was near the muzzle but did not fire it and there was no evidence of any struggle. So there has been many stories about what happened that night. There was even a story of DeFeo saying that he was sitting on the couch, drugged, watching a show on LSD and heroin, and said that a hooded demon with black hands handed him a rifle and then told him to kill his parents. Later on, someone said that they seen, possibly, DeFeo's sister walking out with a hood and black gloves and the rifle to a truck and driving out to the dock where later that murder weapon was found and apparently years later another gun was also found in the water by the same area. Nearly a year after the murders in the DeFeo house, the Lutz family bought the house at a discounted price but they only lived there for 28 days due to the paranormal activity according to them. Many people have said that the Lutz family made up all the paranormal activity they have talked about for money, though. But that's for you guys to decide. And according to the Lutzes, what happened in those 28 days was horrifying. They said that they would hear knocking, scratching, banging, and all sorts of stuff in the house. And that in one room, there was always a major swarm of flies, even in the winter and one of the windows would always open and shut. But according to some of the investigators later on, the flies could have just been from the old smell, and the window opening and shutting was from a floorboard that when you stepped on it, the window would fly open, and when you stepped off of it, it would shut. One of the Lutz's little girls said to have met a friend that looked like a pig with red eyes. But later, one of the neighbors said it was probably his cat that he called the pig that crawled up by the windows of the Lutz's house. But George Lutz claimed to wake up every morning at 3.15 a.m., which was also the time the murders took place. 
They claim to smell strange odors and see green slime oozing out of the walls, keyholes, and experience cold spots. George Lutz was actually so cold that he was always building a fire and always freezing. The priest that they had to come bless the house claimed to hear a voice say get out and told the Lutz family not to sleep in the room he heard the voice in. They claimed to hear garage doors and see garage doors opening and closing at the house and a knife knocking down in the kitchen. And George and his son were saying that the pig-like creature that the daughter was friends with was staring down at George and his son Daniel from the window when they were on the ground. George said that he seen his wife Kathy levitating off the bed and also seen his son Daniel and Christopher levitating off their beds together. And after telling these stories, Kathy and George took a lie detector test and they passed the lie detector test. According to many people, the Lutzes had made it all up for money and clout. But strangely enough, William Weber, who was DeFeo's attorney, got together with the Lutzes, and over a few bottles of wine, he said that they made it all up just for a book and to make money. But the son Daniel claims that he has nightmares to this day and that house ruined his life forever. One of DeFeo's stories out of the many he has said was that he did hear voices telling him to kill his family in the house. But since the Lutzes left the house, there has been four different families live in the Amdeville house and they have not witnessed any paranormal activity at all. The Lutzes did claim that whatever was in the house did follow them out though. So what do you think happened? Who do you think really killed the DeFeo family? And do you think the Lutzes really did experience paranormal activity in the Amityville house? And do you think it's still haunted to this day? Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to hear more awesome spooky stories.